Cousins, Anthony Jones here with Brigade Boats, and this video is everything I know to help you carpet like a pro. Now this is my updated DIY carpet video. I did a carpet video three years back on my channel. Since then it's gotten over 350,000 views, but I've done a lot of boats since then. I've learned a lot and I have a lot of updated techniques that I wanted to share with you guys. So in this video, I'm outlining it in chapters. I go way in depth, I go step by step, and I'm gonna show you everything from the tools and the materials needed to how I do the job. But not only how I do the job, but all the techniques within the job. I'm gonna show you how to wrap an aluminum lid using contact cement. I'm gonna show you how to wrap wooden parts using carpet glue and staples. I'm gonna show you how to wrap an aluminum deck system inside of a bass boat using glue, and I'm also gonna show you how I wrap all the lid returns within that deck system using contact cement. So whether you're doing a John Boat to Bass Boat build using wood or aluminum, whether you're restoring an aluminum bass boat, or even doing carpet job on a fiberglass bass boat, there is something in this video for everyone. I hope that you can take something away from it. And as always, check out my boys at tinyboatnation.net for all of your boat building needs. And don't forget to use that code BRIGADE at checkout, save 5% off your order. Without further ado, let's get this party started. This is the project. It is a Bass Tracker. This one is a Pro Team 17. And as you can see, this boat was dropped off to me by a customer. This one was taken apart and all of the carpet was already removed. We're just gonna re-carpet and I'm gonna show you step-by-step step how we carpet the inside of an aluminum bass boat because it's a question I get a lot is how do I do aluminum lids and panels? If you're gonna take on a project of this magnitude, I will forewarn you, this is not a quick and easy job to do a boat like this. You're not gonna start on a Friday night and be fishing on the lake on Sunday. That's just not how um, this kind of a project goes. Uh, there's gonna be a lot of labor hours in this guys I'm grateful that this boat was brought to me in this condition because I've done some in the past and um, the gutting and the removing of the carpet and scraping and grinding and wire wheeling and using chemical solvents to clean and remove adhesive it's a lot to it guys it really really is um, but we're halfway home here this is typically how I like to get a boat you want to get it back down to bare aluminum you want to get as much of this old adhesive and glue off as possible and there's a lot of different ways to do it and it just depends on the boat the condition of the carpet and how long it's been sitting this boat actually has eight lids the back deck it's got the seating area it's got the console the rod locker the two side panels the floor system the front deck and the front tray a lot of parts guys but i'm going to show you in this video um, how i do the different variety of parts as a tutorial and uh, show you all the good stuff that i use to make this project come together let's take a look at some of the materials i'm going to need to complete this project obviously we're going to have carpet and i'm going to get to that in a minute but beyond that, the main thing you're going to need is a way to glue the carpet down. And I've got a couple different options, so let me walk you through them. Depending on who you ask or what you read on the good old interwebs, you're probably going to find different answers for what the best glue or adhesive is to use for your boat carpet project. So what I'm going to do is just show you what I use and why I use it and why it has worked well for me in the past and kind of explain my process. So number one, we've got Weldwood Contact Cement. Now, the bass tracker I've got, and frankly, just about every boat I've ever seen, unless it's been recarpeted, um, has contact cement from the factory. Is typically how they glue the carpet down. So this is what they use. Now, they use an industrial strength. I'm not sure if it's the same as what you what this is from Lowe's or Home Depot. This is what I'm going to use on all of the lids, the side panels, pretty much anything in the boat that's not like a major square footage area. Now, for like the back deck or the floor system or the front deck, I'm going to go ahead and I use this indoor outdoor carpet adhesive. And I believe I did get this at Lowe's. I've had great success with this. I use this strictly because this stuff is sticky and nasty and you got to let it flash over and it's hard to work with. And I'm a solo operation. So for the really big um, panels, for workability and curing time and maneuverability and just ease of install on the carpet, that's why I use the glue. My customer dropped off this and it's just another exterior marine adhesive. He probably bought this from the same place that he bought his boat carpet, which was boatcarpet.com. I typically get all of my carpet from tinyboatnation.net. As long as you're using a good 16 or 20 ounce bass boat carpet, wherever you get it from, and it's got the good marine backing, then uh, you're ready to rock. 
Now to spread the contact cement, you just need some brushes. And I've got different sizes depending on the panel to spread any of the adhesives or glue. You got these spreaders with the handle and I've got these other spreaders. And sometimes I'll cut these down to a smaller size. Always use the larger groove. You'll notice there's two different size grooves. Always use a larger groove. And then of course you're gonna need a razor knife and about a thousand razor blades um, and a straight edge. Got the carpet rolled out. Again, 20 ounce bass boat carpet. This boat is a 17. Um, so, you know, a lot of guys will only order 20 foot of carpet. You gotta account for inside compartments and, and rolling edges. And perhaps you mess up a panel, just gives you room to play with. I always say order more than you need then try to cut yourself short because a lot of times you're gonna eat through this faster than you think. And I like to order a longer length because the way that I do boat carpet jobs is the way a professional does. And what I mean by that is everything is ran directionally. And if you don't know what that means, basically any part that's in this boat, like this front tray, for example, it sits in this boat like this. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna mark this carpet over here and we're gonna say, front and this panel is going to get out, cut out of a piece of carpet and it's going to get wrapped just like this okay and then say we take this this uh this rod locker lid let me grab it and, and you see it's a longer length this is the front of the rod locker lid so we're going to take that over here and when it gets cut out that's the front and so we're going to measure it this way and so on and so forth see sometimes what guys will do is they'll either by purpose or accident, they'll flip this this way and say it doesn't matter, or they'll put this this way, you know, because that kind of makes sense. Um, you're cutting a shorter length. But what happens, guys, is the way that this carpet is pressed and manufactured from the factory, it's got this grain in it. So when you start doing that and flipping pieces and putting them um, back in the boat and they're all facing a different direction than how they were manufactured, that carpet reflects the light from the sun different. And that's how you end up with one of those boats, and I'm sure you've all seen it, um, with 50 shades of gray inside. It looks like, uh, you know, different shades of carpet or, you know. And so to avoid that problem, you've got to pay attention and you've got to cut everything directionally. And because of that, sometimes you end up with a little bit more waste. But in the end, you get a much better result. I want to show you guys what I was talking about as far as the carpet grain not matching up and when you flip flop and turn pieces and panels, um, how you get 50 shades of gray. So as you can see, this is a separate piece that I've cut and I've overlapped it over a larger piece. And I don't know if you can see that on camera, but it is the same color. Now watch this. I'm going to take this piece. I'm going to turn it around. Complete opposite way. And I want you to check that out. When the sun hits it, it is noticeably lighter shade of gray than the other carpet underneath it. And um, for me, it's real obvious to see. I don't know how well it's picking up on camera. But uh, that's, that's kind of the whole premise behind it, guys. So again, I mark all of my carpet directionally and install everything going one way in the boat so everything matches, as you can see there. I always like to just put random pieces of tape with an arrow signifying that's the front of the boat that's how we're going to cut it all but this carpet's a lot easier to cut upside down because of the marine backing so i'm gonna go ahead and flip this roll over just want to show that to you all right guys got my carpet laid out now remember we've got this mark that's going forward so every piece that we cut um, we need to make sure that that it's going forward so this lid is actually hinged this way so this is this is to the front of the boat so it's basically going to go like that when we wrap it. So let's go ahead and mark forward on that. And then we're going to cut it. I'm going to use this straight edge. This is just a piece of aluminum we use for framing. This is a factory cut here. All right. So I'm going to get rid of that because I want a really nice, perfect cut with a brand new blade because this cut here is going to butt this hinge. And this is gonna be the most important cut I do. So it needs to be really, really nice. So we're just gonna square this off. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cut it, I'm just gonna cut it a little bit big. When I get it inside, we will um, trim off the excess and I'll show you how I do that. 
See how nice that edge is? It's a real, real sharp cut. That's what you want. All right, that's what you want, and that's button the hinges. So first things first, I've got this, denatured alcohol, all right? So I like to clean the aluminum really good. This has been sanded, all the glue's been removed. So we're just gonna wipe this bad boy down, get it real clean. The tops, the sides, and then this inner lip. And it's important on this inner lip to get a majority of the glue and grime off because we're gonna wrap this lip and that carpet's gonna roll under and it needs to be able to grab to some good aluminum. So that glue, as long as you get most of it off, you're good. You can tell from the factory, man, they just get crap everywhere. We've got our carpet marked forward. All right, hinges forward. You always gotta make a mental note of where your part's going in your boat, especially when you got eight hatches. I've got my contact cement opened up. Use in a ventilated area, guys. You'll get high as crap from this stuff. And I like to just brush it on. Now, some guys may want to tape off their hinges, but I've done this enough to where I could get right up to the hinge without getting glue all over it. And really, all I'm going to do is just get about the first half of it covered in glue. And I'll show you why in a second. It's just how I like to do it, guys. All right, remember, arrow forward. I'm going to take this. We're going to put the glue on this. Now, there's different ways to do this. I, I just use this brush. There may be more time-effective ways. I've seen guys use rollers and pour the glue out in the tray. Now, you'll see I'm only gluing the width of the lid. I'm not worrying about the returns. We're going to let this sit for a few minutes and let it flash over. All right, it's been a few minutes. Now what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to flip this over. And again, I can't stress enough making sure that your arrow is pointing in the right direction and your lid placement is correct as to how it's going to go back in the boat. And now all we're going to do is just line this up. And I'm going to butt it to the hinge. I'm going to straighten it out. Get it tight to the hinge. And once it goes down, guys, if it's uh, flashed over good and you put a good coat on both parts, it grabs that rubber backing really, really well. I like to flip it. All right, and now at this point, what I like to do is take my marker and we're just gonna mark out the edges. Now I can flip this back over and flip this up and you're gonna see your mark, all right? And now I know exactly where to glue to. And again, this is just how I do it, and it helps me do it this way. So all I do is put glue to where my mark is because I know that represents the top of the lid. And once I get the glue applied, same deal. I'm gonna let it flash over, and I'm gonna flip it down. You'll know when this glue is flashed over because you'll put your um, your finger on it, and when you pull, It'll get, it'll be super stringy. And even there, you'll see that, that backing actually just came off on my finger. So um, when you see it kind of haze over, or if you touch it, it's like spider web stringy. It's flashed over properly. And now all I'm going to do, flip this down. And you can roll it. And that helps. All right, now we're gonna flip it back over. All right? Now the reason I marked it and glued on the inside perimeter is because I don't want glue getting all the way out here ahead of time because it'll flash over um, before I need it. And then it gets it, it gets hard and it gets messy to cut when this material when it gets glue all over it. So that's why I did what I did up until now. So now what I'm gonna do is just kinda Get a feel for how much material I need to wrap around. And then I'm just simply gonna cut it. Usually by the time I get a few lids in, 
on a, on a boat, I'm able to eyeball um, what I need to cut after I do the first couple lids. All right, so the last thing I need to cut is, um, you know, you're going to go this way and you're going to go this way. So what you need to do is cut this corner. Now, I want to show you something. You need to be precise with this because if you're not, your corner will show. So what I like to do is cut this way to this edge. All right? Just like that. But don't go any further in than this edge. And then on this way, do the same thing like so. That's all you're going to do. And, and, and what happens is if you cut too short, you got to roll it and it exposes this corner and leaves a gap. So just be mindful. All right, now that we've got those corners cut, as you can see, just gonna repeat the process. Get my glue. And normally what I'll do is I'll work my way around the lid. I'll glue and make sure I get glue on one side, get it on the carpet, get on the lip. I get it on the inside lip. Make sure you get it on the top edge, all that's important. And make sure you get enough of it. Don't go super heavy to where it's running everywhere, but don't go too thin either. And as you do this, you'll kind of figure out what you need. Once I get one side, I'll let it sit. And then as I glue the other side, this will be flashing over. And so when I get this side glued, this will be ready to fold. And then I'll get this side glued and I'll fold this. And then that's how I work the part. And that's flashed over. Start on the edge. Get it real tight on this underside because that rounds. That lip, that lip rounds over. And I just kind of work it. Fold it in. See that? Now I've had a couple instances where uh, maybe the glue wasn't flashed over enough or I didn't, the material just wasn't grabbing, but usually it does. Now if it doesn't, an option you have is to take a wood block and, um, and stick it on the inside and clamp it. So that's an option for you. But as you can see, this is working nicely. And that's really all there is to it, guys. As you can see, super clean, straight carpet edge budding that hinge. Looks really nice. And then you can see everything's tight on top. Got that nice rounded corner. And if you flip it over, you got nice cut rolled edges. Nice and professional. Honestly, probably better than it was from the factory. Now, as far as the latch is concerned, what I always like to do is let all this glue cure up and dry, and then that'll be hard, and then you could cut it nice cut with your knife. If you try to cut it while it's still tacky, it just gets messy and it wants to tear the carpet. So I always let these sit for a little while before I mount any of the latches or cut any holes in them. The technique I just showed you to wrap that lid is the same technique I use on all the other aluminum lids and panels throughout a boat carpet job. If it's an aluminum lid, panel, or interior part, this is the method of how I wrap it. And we're moving on, cousins. Now that I've shown you how I wrap the aluminum lids in an aluminum bass boat, and again, this boat had eight lids total, I'm moving on to the floor. Now this is worth mentioning because this is going to use a different glue and a different technique. So I wanted to cover it even though this part is not aluminum. Most aluminum bass boats that I do that are 18 foot and under um, come factory with, a, with wooden parts in them. A lot of times I go back with aluminum, but it's at the discretion of the customer. This one is going back with a factory style floor system and front deck, which is half inch plywood from Bass Tracker. Now what Bass Tracker does is they just use half inch marine grade 
carpet it and stick it in there. Now what I do is I take it a step further and I use the half inch exterior gray ply and I coat it in a thick coat of fiberglass resin. As you can see, it is gently sanded to give this carpet something to bite to, but that resin will help waterproof it and seal it and just give it an extra layer of protection as opposed to how Bass Tracker runs their wood from the factory. This should last a lot longer. On my wood parts and especially one of this size, my preference is to use carpet glue. Now again, I normally get this stuff at Lowe's, but my customer provided this 390 exterior adhesive. And so we're gonna try this out for this carpet job on this wood part. And to spread it effectively, I'm gonna actually use this to scoop, throw it on there and use this to spread. Again, I'm gonna use the thicker side at the bottom on the spreader, got me a sharp blade. And then over here, we've got a staple gun hooked up to an air hose and compressor. I'm using stainless 5 16 staples. On this one, again, I've got my carpet marked. That goes to the front of the boat. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna glue the wood surface, the top, and I'm gonna flip it over. Okay, so it's gonna be upside down. So we're just paying attention to the direction of the carpet. So this floor will match everything else in the boat directionally. Once I get my carpet all glued down, all I need to do is just make sure I flip it over, make sure it's nice and tight, stretch it out, walk on it, roll it, and then flip it back over, and then I roll my edges and staple. Now, me personally, I like to have a minimal lap of about an inch, and so I cut it that way, and then what I like to do is instead of pulling with my hand and stapling, I've shown in some other carpet videos, I like to take these pliers, and I like to crank that yank and pull it real tight, and then that gives me a super, super tight carpet roll. And then you can plug more staples in. I, I go to town with the staples. I'm not afraid to use them. And I just work my way around, get everything real tight. And then I'm going to show you how I do the corners. How I do my corner. Now I've shown this in my video I did years and years ago on, on carpeting on a boat, but I'll show it here. So with my corners, you could just square this off, but then what happens is you end up with a crease on your corner, and I like a rounded corner. So here's what I do. You see that I've stapled these both to this point, and then you get this lap. Now what I like to do is I like to come in. You need a sharp blade. I'm going to cut both of these at about a 45, and then I'm just going to slowly roll that up and slowly cut that up. And then you're just going to have this, this tuft of carpet, and then I'm going to pull this over. You could use your pliers, but with this backing on this, I don't want to rip this rubber. I'm just going to take this tuft. And I'm going to pull it tight over the corner, roll it down, staple it in. I have a perfect rolled corner and there's no, there's no seam or anything on that corner. And it's just a really nice look when you put the part and install it or flip it over. There she is looking good. Ye old floor for the Bass Tracker 17. And as you can see, that rounded corner, that's what I like. That's how I like to do it. So um, floor's done. And so that's uh, wrapping a flat panel, this one in particular in wood. And now I'm going to get inside the boat and do the inside uh, decks of the boat that are aluminum. Show you how I do that. The technique I just showed you to wrap a wood part is the same technique I use to wrap all wood parts I do, including the floor and front deck in this boat, as well as entire deck systems and lids in previous wood builds that I've done in the past. So far, I've showed you how to carpet an aluminum hatch lid. I've shown you how I carpet a flat wooden floor system. And now I'm going to show you how to carpet the factory aluminum rear casting deck in this Bass Tracker. All right, guys, couple quick notes before I carpet this back deck. Um, number one, this is not a how I prep a boat 
for carpet video. This is a carpet video, so I skip over a lot of the prep work. Now, again, this boat was brought to the customer 90% prep. Um, there's minimal work I had to do as far as using um, some chemical removal of some glue inside the track, some scraping, a little bit of wire brushing, a paddle wheel on an angle grinder to hit a lot of these little areas, clean it up a little bit more. The first time I did one of these, I was super intimidated, but the more I've done them, the more I've gotten dialed in to how I like to approach this task. Um, as a solo operation, guys, I'm going to show you how I like to do it as a one man show. So I'm going to go get my carpet cut. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut um, a six foot wide piece and it's going to come and I'm going to leave excess on each side to trim back and, and, and it's going to go down. I'm going to kill it into this. I just need a piece wider and longer than what I really need. And then once I get it glued down and start working it to the edges, I'm going to trim as necessary. And for this back deck section, I'm going to use this indoor outdoor adhesive that I got at Lowe's. It just grabs that backing really well. It immediately grabs that and holds um, the stuff I used on the floor. It, when it cures and glues down, it's great stuff, a little bit thin, and it doesn't have that grab that this stuff has. Because it's thinner, it just kind of gets everywhere. It drips a lot. This stuff's thicker. So we're going to go with this on this aluminum, and I'm going to use some of this contact cement also. Just a preference, guys. You can go all contact cement if you want, but again, for this piece being so big, it's going to be hard for me to use this and not jack something up. This is a little bit more forgiving, so that's what I'm going to use. But I will be using this, and I'll show you when I get to it how I use it. Got the carpet in place. And again, I know I've said it 20 times in this video. Check the direction. Direction is running that way. Marked on the bottom. Good to go. I made some really nice cuts. So what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to, when I lay this down, get these really nice cuts to butt up to this edge where it kills in. Obviously I've got excess on this side and on that side, but what happens is the boat starts to curve out, okay? So even with a straight cut butted into this back corner, what's gonna happen is you can see you're starting to get some excess. So that's gonna get trimmed. I'm gonna peel up half to the middle, glue my top and then work it back down and out and then repeat the process on the other side. And then as I go, just trim where necessary and uh, cut out all the holes for the lids. Alrighty, got half of it glued down. And as you can see in that time lapse, because I do this solo and there's just so much room for error with manipulating this and trying to get it in place. Um, again, the glue I use, a lot more flexibility than the contact cement. It's just super hard to do a part this big with contact cement as just a one man deal. So uh, this stuff works great. Um, I'll use this uh, knife to kind of press my edges super tight. You could run this down, down your edge. All right, get everything locked in. I'm gonna go ahead and flip the other side back and repeat the process. All right, now that's all wrapped. I'm gonna go ahead and cut out where these hatches are very carefully, find my corner. Just gonna go in. You need to wrap this and then go under like so. So, you know, we're still gonna cut a couple inches off. But that's that. I'm just going to repeat the process on all the other ones. And of course, I need to cut out. And I try to do this while the glue is still tacky. I need to cut out this pedestal base hole because I want this to glue down. And this, this hole is holding it up. So all I'm doing is using this tool to kind of find where that's at. Sharp blade, guys is the key. There's that. 
starting to look like something. So after I glue all the carpet down, I immediately cut out my hatches and then any kind of trimming along edges I need to do or like around that seat pedestal base, um, I trim everything while that glue is still tacky because if you come back like the next day and try to cut some of this stuff or trim it out, um, that glue is set and you're not going to get anything back down where you want it. So immediately start trimming. Now I'm going to go ahead and glue this flap down. And because this is only like a six inch section, I'm going to, I'm going to trim it first and I'm going to flip it up, contact cement and then contact cement and then glue it back down for immediate grab. And then all of these are going to get contact cemented down. I like to use the contact cement around any of these transitions um, just because it really, really grabs it and holds it in place. Um, this glue is really good for flat surfaces, but when you try to get in here with it, you might have to use clamps to clamp it while it cures and that contact cement, you don't. And that's why I use it in certain places. That's how I glue with the contact cement on a return. All right, so what I do here is we make sure we're cut all the way into that corner perfectly. Got my lap. We're gonna roll it down and then it's actually going to go down and then under, okay, like so. So I'm just figuring out how much material I need and then I'm just gonna cut it. All right, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna contact cement under this, contact cement this, and then I'm simply gonna glue it down and roll it and it should hold. And there you have it. So now that that's glued up, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same technique I showed you earlier in the video when I do the lids. I'm going to apply glue to uh, this piece and this flap and let that flash over. While that's flashing over, I'm going to go ahead and apply glue to this piece and this flap. Once I got glue on this one, I'm going to come back and press this one down and permanently bond it. And uh, once that's permanently bonded, I'm going to go over and put glue on this flap. And then once that that's glued up, then I'm going to go back and permanently um, attach that one and just work my way around. All right, everything is glued up. All the hatch lids are cut out. All the hatch lid returns are glued up. And now I'm gonna show you what I do with all these little scrap pieces and how I use these to uh, finish this project. Now this is just a preference deal. Um, you could just do this and leave it as is. When you open your lids, you're gonna see some exposed corners. There's just nothing you can do about that when you cut this material to lap it inside these lids. That just is what it is. But what I like to do is take a little triangle, all right, and I cut a slit in it, and we're just going to slide it in and roll it over. See what, see how it looks? I've already put glue. Already got one glued up. So we're just going to stick it in there. I'll show you how this works. And this is what I do in all my corners. There you have it, and that's what I do to give it a nice, complete, finished look. Again, a little triangle, cut you a slit, glue her up, cousins. And that's it, guys. That's how you carpet the aluminum deck portion of an aluminum bass boat build. Obviously, I've got some cleaning up to do. Got to mount the lids. Um, you know, this boat has more carpet. I got to get in here, mount the floor system. But for the most part, it just needs put back together. 75% of it has been carpeted at this point. So let's fast forward you to the put back together version of this Pro 17, give you a walkthrough of how the carpet turned out. And here she is cousins, fully done, 100% complete. The build is done, heading out the door in the next few days. And as you can tell, the carpet job turned out phenomenal. Uh, the tricks and tips that I share with you in this video can hopefully help you achieve the same results that I got in this Bass Tracker Pro Team 17. And you could just barely tell that, that grain in the carpet 
all runs the exact same direction from the front to the rear of the boat and uh, of course because of that there are no color variations when the light hits it everything matches everything blends very nicely and i was able to get carpet inside the hatches measure twice cut once and then in this storage compartment the carpet just rolls around the edges carpeted down the back wall added some tackle storage and carpeted the upper panel for that and of course carpeted inside the rod locker fully carpeted and uh that's that's about it guys oh yeah we did carpet inside underneath the jump seat all the way 100 percent i believe that's it guys i hope that you were able to take something away from this video and again that these tips and tricks will help you with your own aluminum bass boat carpet job uh, this is just how i do it for customers on the old bass tracker I've done enough of these to know and share this video with you guys and my tips and tricks another brigade boat built heading out the door again hope you guys enjoyed it and we'll catch you guys on the next one